Sienna Beckman, and I will be the host of this episode of Talk Art, where local artists in Silicon Valley demonstrate a wide variety of media and artistic techniques. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open their studios to the public. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. For more information, you can go to the website, svos.org. Our guest is your normal host, Sally Rain, an abstract painter and video artist who has developed a new style called Dynamic Symbolism. Welcome, Sally. Well, thank you. Thank you for hosting the show for us. Welcome. So, tell us about Dynamic Symbolism. Well, Dynamic Symbolism is something that I started developing when, while I was in college, and it's sort of a stream of consciousness type of art. I don't have a plan necessarily for the type of painting that I'm going to do. I usually choose colors, but I don't really have that much of a plan for it. When I paint a line, most of the time I don't know where that line's going to end until after I've started it. So that's a very immediate sort of painting process for me. And what it's developed into is that people see images in the sharp lines and the different colors that I don't didn't plan for sure and I don't see them myself until after they point them out so the painting itself is dynamic mm. okay and people's interpretations of it change and they change how I look at the paintings so this kind of process has developed through many art fairs and talking to literally thousands of people mm. about the art and listening to their observations so I called it dynamic because it changes, and symbolism because people see actual symbols in it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, well, how, where, did that, where did your art form come from? What, what inspires you in your art? I think mostly I see natural images in it, and the colors often are natural, like rainbow colors, or I do a lot of tree paintings that they're not actual trees, mm -hmm. but the colors are inspired by the forest. And I love hiking and gardening. So I think the natural world really does inspire a lot of the work that I do. And also, I believe I have a, a vast like, repository of images that's in my brain that I subconsciously attach to when I'm painting. And that's where the images come from. So that's what inspires me. I think. Okay. And so where did, what was your background in art? So where did, where does that come from? Well, I went, I traveled the world as a young child and went to many museums. I'm a self-taught artist for the most part. I took classes on how to use different media and I was apprenticed to a local painter for a while, Rebecca Holland. I went to her studio and learned about the brushes and acrylic paintings. Um, but mostly I'm self-taught, and but I learned a lot about video. And so I'm also a video artist. So what I've done over the years is connected the paintings to video, sort of cross that physical, digital boundary. OK, cool. Yeah, so I brought some images of paintings that I've done, sort of a little historical process that I'd like to show you. Great, let's take a look. So this painting called Dancing with Swift Shields is a charcoal drawing. And it was one of the very first ones that really made me think about how people see and how people look at paintings based on what they've seen before, I think. So this one, I, in the middle, I always saw a crab shell. I did it at a time where some dear friends had died of cancer. I see crab claws. And it was a very sharp type of painting for me. And mm -hmm. it had a lot of history. And it hung in my living room for seven or eight years. And then I took it to a fair. And a woman from India looked at it. And she saw in the middle a perfect elephant head. And if you look, there are tusks. There's a trunk, the ear, all in the center. There's an eye. Everything there oh, is it. exactly an elephant head. Yeah. Another friend of mine has trigger fish, and she has a, a saltwater aquarium at her house. She traced out a trigger fish going the opposite direction, all in the same one. So that's what I'm talking about by the dynamic nature of the symbolism. Different people see different things. 
very cool. Now this one is called Dark Winter. It is really rich in natural imagery. I see bear claws. I see a lot of amphibians in there. I see some flowers in the center. I see part of a, a donkey's face right in the center. I see all kinds of imagery and it's very dark and I did it in a in the El Nino years of 1999 and it was a really dark winter and this is what came up. So it's a charcoal drawing. This one's much lighter. I did this after and I, El Nino was over and I call it Hawk Dancer. I do a lot of dancing. I love listening to music and I love the movement and the flow of music. And so this one looks like music to me. I see a hawk in the middle, sort of possibly a totem pole on the side. A lot of people see Northwestern uh, Native American influences in this. Mm -hmm. When I was doing it, I was really just drawing the lines of charcoal. I loved using charcoal. I still do use charcoal, but not to the extent that I used to. But this one has a lot of imagery. And then up at the top, I see the Bay Bridge. So it's very oh, yeah. <laughs> California West Coast art, yeah, I believe. Yeah, this one feels much more springtime. Yes, than yes. And seasons are reflected in my paintings, for sure. Now this one is an acrylic painting that I call Cornucopia. And it just is abundant with garden imagery. I, I did it in the spring. It's a springtime painting, and um, it, I use metallic paints. Acrylics are mm. great; have some great metallic paints. So the gold is actually a gold paint, and it's reflective. Um, but this one was based on rainbows, and I do a lot of work around the rainbow color spectrum. Not all of it. There are some pinks, which aren't in the rainbow. Yeah. But this one's green. about food. I was going to say, I see green peas in the middle. Peas Lemons. or broccoli seeds, black beans, there's corn, there's Pink, all kinds yeah. of things. But then I also, I also see a griffin in there, Ooh. a lion's face with a wing. <laughs> this one's called nesting. And this one is one of, it started as a pastel drawing. It was one of the very first drawings that I did. And it's aged over time, pastels, the way I was doing them when I started didn't last very long, so I transferred it to a uh, acrylic painting, and then it just didn't look right in acrylic. So I have literally been working on this image for 25 years, and I think it's done now. I just finished it, um, but it's called nesting, and in it I see a, a quail nesting. Um, I see a hummingbird and a fuchsia flower, and there's a lot of imagery around the nest. Women's circle. This is from our women's circle. So you're my daughter. Mm -hmm. We didn't say that. And we were in a women's circle for many years. And so this is a tribute to them. Lots of women. Angel's Landing. Now this one is a new idea. It's a new framing idea. And I'm working with the studio shop in Burlingame to expand on this and to create larger frames with some of my larger pieces. But on the edges, those are mirrors. I paint on the gallery wrap canvases. And you can't see the edge. And you, when you take a photo of it, you can't see the edges. So this is the, those are mirrors that are in the frame that you can see the edges. And when you walk past it, the imagery in the mirrors moves with you. So it catches your eye. That's a very creative way to see the whole, the whole thing. Here's one of my tree paintings, the Madrone painting. Um, I call it Mama Madrone because the Madrone just makes me think of very feminine curves and the way the um, it's cool to the touch and this and the greens show through and the in the bark and irises down in the corner but there are lots of birds hidden in the bark and in the leaves around the trees um, and this one is one that I've done a video about I'm not going to see it this time but I really like the bright colors yeah. and so this is one where I chose the color palette before I actually painted it and constricted myself. You see there's no yellows in it. Mm -hmm. There's no red. It's a, I mix some colors. I have sienna brown, burnt siennas in there. Yay. I like to mix that. It's my favorite color brown. <laughs> okay. 
This is a new one, stately lady. I recently moved from the mountains, the Santa Cruz Mountains, down into the town of Burlingame. And I walked to work, and I walked past these enormous stands of eucalyptus trees. And so when I painted this, I just started painting, and I saw the eucalyptus. It was more white in the middle, but eucalyptus change all the time. They're, they grow the bark, and then the bark falls off, and they grow more bark. And so this one seems to me to represent the eucalyptus a little bit more. I did some work after I saw the tree to make it really reflect the just absolutely gorgeous stately eucalyptus trees in the area. Yeah. Now this one was a commission piece and that's why you can see more exact imagery in it. You can see right in the middle there is an animal head and there are paw prints that I created specifically for this painting. It was a request by, from a friend of mine. It's called Wolf Mountain and she just loves wolves. has wolves all over her house. So I did this one for her. She picked the colors. It was based on a, a different painting that I had done previously. Very metallic. There's the full moon. And that's how I generally work with people who ask for commissions. They have an idea that they want represented. And then I add my style to it. And this is my most recently completed piece called Raven's Wine. And this one took a very long time to, to do. It is hanging here behind you in the studio. And there are multiple layers on this one. It, people ask me how long it takes to do a painting. And I never really know, because I often am working on multiple paintings at the same time. But I know this one was over the course of at least six months, where I'd come back to it again. Oh, no, mm. it's not done yet. Yeah. So, But I really like the vibrancy of the greens in this one and it has a reddish coppery me metallic color. Yeah, it's very busy. It's got a lot going on. It's got a lot going on. There are lots of imagery. I haven't really spent that much time even looking at it that much, but I definitely see the raven and I definitely see the glass of wine or possibly sangria mm -hmm. towards the top. Yeah. Um, but this one, what I do while I take and one way that I do know how long something takes is I take photographs of the beginning and the end because people ask me how I do these. And so I have a, a short video to demonstrate the, the progress of the painting. So Raven's Wine. I start with a structure. And so this is what I started with black on this one. And I add one color at a time. And the colors progress. It's sort of a random way of doing it. I look for balance as I'm going. And then I'll go back and add more colors. And this is, I thought it was done, but then I s decided to add black at the end. I kept hearing the song, Paint It Black, by the Rolling Stones, mm -hmm. and I painted a lot of black. That painting and a different one that's all black and white. Cool. So, yeah. That's very cool. I like, you can see, taking pictures really makes you see how you how it progresses because right. it could very well be that you you know go back and forth but working color by color yes that's very and cool. that I don't start with the tracing people are mm -hmm. often surprised you don't trace it all out you don't have a plan nope no sketches at all it just happens yeah cool well um, so you work you started as a visual artist as a painter charcoal right. pastels but now you also are a video artist so you have kind of taken your art into more of the technology space. So how do you see your art changing as technology advances? Well, I, cr I have actually started learning about video and working in a television studio about the same time as I started painting. We both were in college. Oh. So I've kept up with the video editing. Mm -hmm. I'm now a video editor by trade. It's one of the ways that I earn a living. And I create video about the art. and. Technology is amazing right now. We have magic wands. These are our magic wands, yep. the phone. <laughs> All and I have, I have business cards that I, ha that I used an app called Erasma to connect the card to a video in the phone. So, we, so here's one of my business cards. This is the charcoal drawing, Dark Horse 2. Mm -hmm. And what you can do is you give someone a business card and you say, I have a card trick. Would you like to see my card trick? Yes, I so, would. You put the card down and you hold your phone over it and it turns into 
a video. So there's the video that I have attached. Oh, it's a horse. Yeah, so it's the dark horse, and I found stock footage of a horse, and I did a little bit of trickery with luma keys, mm -hmm. and I have some fire and some ice going on with it. Cool. And so, and then it turns into the card. And what happens, I was just at the National Association of Broadcasters convention, mm -hmm. and I went around with this, and apparently I was the only one who'd seen this before. I was an early adopter of this app. Of the app? Okay, which was cool. awesome. And people would look at my card and say, can I take it? <laughs> it's like, you well, know, I well, guess. I, it's Please my business take card. Your business sure, card, yeah. take it. So I have several. Here's another card. This one's called Oceanaria. Mm -hmm. And so it does it the same thing. So you can hold it over and then you can see the video. So I have, with this idea of technology, I have developed an app that will let people tell me what the interaction is, what they see. So here's a painting. This painting is called Fertility. And if you see this in a gallery or a museum, you can't touch the painting. You can't go up and go, oh, I see this over here. And when people describe it, it's difficult to see. So um, for a couple of years, I've had an iPad app that people will touch the screen and re it records what is done. So we have it here on the smart board, on the big screen. And my di idea is to have an installation using touch screens. And it's internet based. So there's a database that um, stores the images that people record and allows you to see what other people have seen. So here's, I'll show you how it works. I'm going to go down here. And in this area right here, I see a bluebird. So here's the beak, and it highlights the beak. Oh. And as you touch it, each piece gets highlighted. So there's the wing that I see. Here's the body. There's a nice long tail that goes down. So it's a long bluebird's tail. It's standing on a branch. Cool. And so this is what I see here. And so I'm going to record this. So I touch Finish. And it builds it. There it and is. And then it says, what do you see? So over here on this smart board is the keyboard. And so on the keyboard, I'm going to type in Bluebird. And voila. There it is. And it's recorded now. And so then there's a way that you can see, now that I've done one, I can see what other people have seen. Yes. So here's a tree that someone saw. Wow, and that's a look at that. It's very tree. bright. It's a pear tree. And, but it, and this is another tree that someone saw with uh, autumn colors. Mm -hmm. And it's the same area, same idea, but a different same tree painting. that someone else saw. And they touched yeah. out each piece of that. And it really comes out with the black background. Yeah, and this one is so stark with that whole huge painting. It's a grass seed exploding. Just one wisp of grass in that <laughs> wow. whole huge painting. There's a leaping fish, fish. and a you know, big, beautiful koi fish, perhaps. And then someone else saw an oh. entire school of fish all the way across the painting. So these have been recorded by people using the iPad that I've taken to art fairs all over the place. Two different, completely different faces. ideas. They're faces. So profiles oh, of faces. So oh, I see them. Yeah, so you can see a big cheek and two eyes. Yeah. And this is a mermaid. I certainly didn't oh, see a wow. mermaid there. Oh, it has your bluebird in it, though. It does. That's same that's same area. This time. And the exact same place, a saxophone player saw a saxophone. Oh, yeah. There Look it at is. that. <laughs> I play sax. Yep. And there's another bluebird, a parrot, oh, but parrot. see the beak is different. 
They oh, chose yeah. different colors. So oh, cool. from what I did. And a dog howling. Look at that. Great oh, day. wow. Yeah, same as a tree. Except this one is different. quail with little quails underneath it. Aww. Very much more abstract. Yeah. But this is a badger. I think you did this one. Badger leaping Ooh, down is very purple. Oh, I see it. Yeah, I don't remember. And this is a pelican flying up. Yep. I really like yep, that one. Yeah, I see it. So that one was done online, and I didn't even see the person doing it. It showed up one day in the so database. Cool. This one is Bob Dylan. Look at that. From a poster of 1960s. You're probably too young for it, <laughs> but there's this poster that looked very similar. Not exactly like that, but, but his hair was yeah. all wavy. And <laughs> someone saw it, put That's it in awesome. there. A horse. A uh -huh. lot of people see horses in my art. Yeah. Very colorful horse. Looks like a palomino. Turtles, a turtle head, a large turtle, and then oh, a very okay. small turtle. Mm -hmm. So you're choosing different color patches mm -hmm. and matching the colors together. People often do that yeah. when they interact with the app. This one's Egyptian eye makeup. Look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah, I see it. I was not That's thinking so, Egyptian. No, no, and so no. this is an otter head. And this is one that I saw. Okay. And this is connected to the idea of the next idea of the app a cockatiel mm -hmm. or a parrot's head, just the head of it. Yeah. And then this one is a deer head with one antler. And from oh. here, the idea with the app is that I then take what viewers have seen and they participate in the creation of the entire artwork. So it goes from a painting to the interaction online with the touch screen. And then I create video that people can see that I've responded to their art. So we can see the video now. That's so cool because when you look at the full painting, there's so much, but when it comes out on the black background, so many things you don't see before come right. out. But people see them, yeah. and that's the interaction that I really want to explore because it amazes me what people see. Yeah. And they'll say, oh, I just was on vacation on a tropical island, and I see these tropical flowers, or mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm from Jamaica. And or Trinidad, and I see carnival masks. Or, mm -hmm. So people tend to see what they've seen before. Right. And in the interaction of the symbols, I think, is a really important idea. I mean, I've studied a lot about symbols, and um, the psychologist Carl Jung did a lot of writing about archetypes mm -hmm. and how their imagery that people around the world share in, on a subconscious level. So. I paint these without conscious intent, and people see them and add to stories that I create about the art. Yeah. And I think that whole realm is a really interesting idea. So I really cool. do. So that was kind of that's the inspiration behind the app is to take one painting and essentially you can take people with from different cultures, from different backgrounds, yes. from different countries, and they see things that are completely different. Yes, and it's a chance to see what other people see, like looking mm -hmm. through someone else's viewpoint, and you see it on your own, you know, from what you've seen. Yeah. Um, so where, where do you see this kind of installation, the touch screens being set up? Okay, I would really like to have it in a museum setting. Mm -hmm. I think people walking through the museum. It's a really good way to interact with the art. And it's an interesting interaction that they can then have an app on their iPad and see it progress. It's something that they can take home with them. Mm -hmm. They can interact on the large screens, because that's really fun. And the big screens are so cool to, yeah. to work with. But then to have it on a smaller screen and to see the interaction. And someone who actually has a painting in their home could participate with me in the actual oh, creation yeah. of the art, because the art doesn't stop at the painting. 
Yeah. It continues on through the video and the interaction and how people interpret it. So yeah. I think it's a really cool new social media type of art. Yeah, very cool. And as you said, like in the museum, you're not allowed to touch the painting right. on the wall, no. but you are allowed to touch the touch screen, which yes. is really cool. Yes. Um, so where can people find your art? Well, they, um, I'm part of the Silicon Valley Open Studios, which is this month in May. I will be in Hillsborough. There's a I, part of a student and staff show at the Crocker Middle School in Hillsboro. Okay. So part of the SVOS mandate is they help students. So I'm helping students prepare their art, and my art will be there as well. Cool. And then in the third weekend in May, I'm going to be in Half Moon Bay, right on Main Street, oh. in this beautiful building, which is part of the Moonside Bakery building. Mm -hmm. and I'll be showing with a glassmaker friend, Barbara Grauke, who owns the bakery. Cool. Yeah, and we'll have a big display there, lots of paintings. Great. Yeah. And you have an online presence or I website? I do. I have a website that has my paintings, and um, soon we'll have more of the interactions. So I'm, I'm really hoping to expand that idea and to, you know, perhaps show in a gallery. But I'd really like to work on a large museum installation. That's my, that's my main goal. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. I, I'm sure it will come to be. Thank you. Welcome. Well, thank you for being the host. You are welcome. This was great to see all of it come together in one place. Yes, thank so, you. Thank you very much for tuning in to this episode of Talk Art. I hope you enjoyed.